Okay, we can start. Yes, sir. Is it audible, sir? Yes. Okay, sir. Yeah. So, good morning to all. So, the topics which I have been assigned is includes uh, clearing and settlement of cash derivatives and mutual funds so in today uh, i will be taking you through clearing and settlement of cash so giving a brief description of the topics i would say that clearing and settlement of cash is actually a, a background operation that happens behind the stock exchange and derivatives and mutual funds uh, i can define it as some stock market products or an investment avenues available for investors so i'll explain a brief history about the clearing and settlement of cash systems in india that um, this as, as of now we follow an electronic clearing and settlement of cash system and this particular system came into force especially with the establishment of nse which happened in the year 1992 1992 national stock exchange was established however it was not a fully automated exchange at that, that time it became a fully automated exchange only at, in the year 1994 even though it became a fully automated exchange, an electronic clearing and settlement system was not much prominent in India those days because primarily because uh, we had physical shares at that, that time. So it is not possible to have an electronic clearing system with physical shares. So in 1996, uh, we introduced the concept of dematerialization and the first depository in India was established in the year 1996. That is the NSDL, National Securities Depositories Limited. So after that, uh, this particular concept was very evident and I would say that is a very effective mechanism as of now in India. So uh, initially we had a T plus 3. I will explain what is this T plus 3, T plus 2 and all. Initially in those days we had a T plus 3. That means we go, we do the trading and the shares get settled in your DMAT account in three days. And now we have a T plus 2 settlement system, which is a rolling settlement system. Rolling settlement system is that uh, in each previously there was designated days for trading and settlement. For example, trading would happen in Monday, uh, Tuesday, and settlements would happen in Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So this system was for it. But now we follow a rolling settlement that trading as well as settlement happen simultaneously in the system. So now we follow T plus two, and the government, the authorities, SEBI, and all exchanges are all in talks to have introduced a T plus one system in the future so that we can settle the trades in a much faster time. Uh, some countries like China as well as Saudi Arabia and all they already have T plus one clearing system. So this is I just wanted to give you a brief history. So now, now let's go to the slides. So um, I know that you many of you may not be aware how uh, this trading happens. So first I will give you an explanation how an investor sees trading and settlement because it is not mandatory that all investors should know about the clearing and settlement system, but in academic interest it is always advisable to have a um, clear picture on the settlement system. So I'll give you an example uh, and and take you through how an investor sees uh, clearing and settlement and after that I'll explain the theoretical concept even though it is a theoretical concept it is better to understand in a practical way. So let us say that uh, Mr. Assume that there is a man called Mr. X and he is very keen on investments. Uh, so he just went to a broker and he applied for opening a DMAT account and he has played the uh, respective charges for opening a DMAT account. Uh, he did some analysis as well. He found that uh, Reliance Industries Limited it is going to do well in the future. And he found that Reliance Industries Limited is going to do well in the future. So assume that the price of Reliance uh, Industries is quarter at thousand rupees per share now. So he has one lakh rupees as his savings. Okay. Now, uh, so this is 19th July 2021. It's a Monday. Okay. And he total he puts a buy order for one lakh rupees. That is hundred shares. Shares at thousand each. So this particular day, particular day would be known as a T day or T day, whatever it is. It is the day on which you put the buy order. So what happens in the T day is that an amount of one lakh plus applicable charges would be debited from your account. 
that I will give you the breakup of applicable charges as well. So is my voice breaking? Yes, sir. So assuming that uh, he he has approached Zeroda as his broker, so that the applicable charges charged by Zeroda is as follows. They have a brokerage of zero charges on equity delivery. I will explain what is equity delivery and all in the coming slides. And if it is an equity delivery, there is no brokerage that is zero or 0.03 percentage or 20 percent, whichever is lower for intraday trading. So what is intraday trading? Some of you may be aware, but still I will give you what is intraday. In simple terms, in layman's language, I can define it as buying and selling on the same day. That is intraday trading. There are different strategies followed by different investors like intraday or swing trading. Swing trading is that buying and selling happens in a time span of two or three weeks. Then we have long term investments as well. So if it's an intraday, this is the charges they charge and security transaction charges 0.1 transaction charges at uh, 0 0.003 to 5 percentage of the turnover. GST at 18 percentage savage. What I want to what I'm coming to say is that uh, investments has become much easier because uh, for one lakh rupees, if you are investing, they are charging an applicable charges of 103 rupees. So, so one lakh hundred and three point nine three. This is the amount that will be debited from your account. So an amount of one lakh hundred and three will be debited from your trading account the day you make the transaction. So remember that money goes out of your account, but the stock does not come to you. That is that on the trading day the money goes out of your account, but the stock does not get delivered to your account. So on the same day, on the T day by the evening, you will get an SMS from the exchange that. Uh, you have made a transaction of this much uh, rupees and you and a contract not has been generated and you will get an e in the email you will get a contract not that you have made the transaction of for this much amount and it will also show a statement similar to this breakup of charges showing the applicable charges the ex the broker has charged and coming into t plus next day so if today is monday so tuesday it is a t plus one day so so this particular day, particular day, the day after you made the transaction is called T plus one day. So um, as, as far as an investor is concerned, nothing much usually happens on a T plus one day. So we can take it as a very simpler terms. Like for example, um, if you go to a shop and if the shop owner's keeper tells that even if you uh, buy the product, we can only deliver it after two days. This is the same thing actually that happens in exchange as well. That is why we call it as T plus two. Even though you buy your share on Monday, they, they, that particular share will be only to be delivered on Wednesday. However, in as far as share to sell it before the before it being delivered, this is what speculators you usually or oh, there's a term called BTST. That is buy today, sell tomorrow. Even though you bought the shares on Monday, shares will be delivered only on Wednesday. However, you have an option to sell that before them. That is called buy today, sell tomorrow. Or we can do it ATST. But there is a risk involved in these kind of trades that I will explain. Then in the coming slides, I will explain how this ATST works. So from an investor's perspective, I would say nothing much happens on T plus one day. You have an option to sell. You may sell or not. You can hold it. However. So as Snake, there you go. Who is breaking? I think uh, it's my own system. There's a problem, or I don't know what about others. Nobody is uh, replying the my chats. Hello, what about all? It's my system the, who is, uh, is breaking or... Sir, two people voice breaking. Okay, what about right now? What about Snehit? Oh, sir, we clear. Okay. Snehi, uh, it is not audible, I think. Yeah. 
think there is some network issue. Yeah, so coming on to the T plus two day, that is uh, on Wednesday. If you have done, can, you, can share, you share trade the on I, bio, I cannot visible, uh, I cannot visible your slides. I can I cannot see you. So slides are there. What about others? Yeah, now it is visible. Continue. Yes, okay. Yeah. So if you put a buy order on at Monday, so the shares will be delivered to you on Wednesday. So that is the T plus two day. So on T plus two, that is on the first half of the exchange time. That is if our exchange opens on 930 around before 12 or somewhere around 11, the shares are debited from the seller and credited to the brokerage with whom you are trading, who will in turn credit it to your DMAT account by the end of, end of the day. And similarly, the money which was debited from you, it means that is the from the buyer is credited to the who sold the shares. So that is the or if you that is on Wednesday on your DMAT account that indicates that you own 100 shares of Reliance. So for all practical purpose, I would say that if you buy a sh share on Tuesday um, on Monday, you can expect to receive the shares in your DMAT account only by the end of T plus two day. The, the shares are available for transaction so that uh, Wednesday the shares get delivered and from Thursday onwards you can start trading with that shares. Yeah, now I will explain a little about this BTST trade as I told in that. So BTST is that before the shares get delivered, you have an option to sell them. That is called BTST trades. So trades where you buy shares and sell it on T plus one on or T plus two before the stock is settled and delivered to your demand. But I said, as I said, there is a risk involved in BTST trades. Uh, let's with this, I can explain it with a simple example like I um, check one lakh rupees in your check. I will check in the payments and settlement system. Monday or check out the assume that Yan the Monday than a present day, present day the Yan Wednesday and account Yan Kodata all the account is credit out. Pashal could Tuesday, I put all the check out of 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 Check a bounce now. This concept number share slim applicable, especially it is applicable when you do short selling. Short selling, but I will say what is in simple terms short selling is that in shares we have an idea like we can sell the shares first and then you can buy the shares. That is called short selling. Either this is apple in equity, it is applicable only if you in intraday trading. Especially if, if for example, I can say that in 9 uh, 9:30 you find that reliance shares is uh, stock that 1100 you sell the shares at 1100 and speculate that by two o'clock if the if that particular shares is like a thousand rupees you get the, that the difference between them that 100 is your profit so you sell the shares first and then you buy it so but one thing we should be very careful while doing short selling is that we should only do it in liquid stocks that is if you sell the shares at, at 9 30 you have an obligation to ensure that that they, that particular share you can buy that particular share before 3:30, or else you will not be in a position to meet your obligation. For and there are many ways that you can find out whether that has the liquidity. For example, I can show you that. I hope my this screen is visible. See, for example, DCM Finster. You can just go to the here there is an option called market depth. You can just click on that and see here the in real time the buy orders and sell orders happening in the exchange. You can see that it is stagnant. There is nothing much now the trading is open. It is stagnant. There is no much buy orders and sell. Order. This blue color indicates buy and red color indicates sell. There is it is stagnant. So we can say that these shares are very illiquid. So these kind of shares we should never do BTST trades or intraday trading. Whereas if you just go to Reliance and click on the market depth, you can see that in real time 
this numbers are very see the blue is coming out there are a lot of orders buy orders are a lot of sell orders so for these kind of shares it is not a big problem that even if you do um, in, in btsd trades or intraday trades so the problem with the risk behind doing intraday trades is that if the seller defaults that is if the seller defaults on meeting his obligations then he should pay a auction penalty which is up to 20% of the value of stock so usually after the trading hours that is after 3:30 the exchange will conduct an auction and in that auction they will acquire these shares but the seller has to meet 20% penalty so that i can show you for example you just go to google and type nse auction see here stocks in call auction you can just click on that yeah so here you can see that so market is just open at 9:30 so you can just only see the session one see dcm finserv it is already they have not met obligations for this uh, this amount of shares this is what happens you can even download this in D csv files and it's a data actually available in nsc website that so you if you closely monitor these companies regularly you can see that these companies are not appropriate for intraday trading so the, uh, by the end of the day actually it will be available for session 2 session 3 session 4 session 5 session 6 and these many shares was not met the obligation so if you check it after 330 you will get the complete list now just the market is open just for one hour so that is why we get only session 1 now so coming back to the slides uh next this is what i wanted to give you how an investor sees uh, about this clearing and settlement now let's look at it the theoretical aspects of clearing and settlement procedure so clearing and settlement is basically classified into three that is first is the trade execution trade execution is that uh, a buy order and a sell order for a specified number of shares at a specified number of price get matched this is a exchange activity and this happens on t day that that, that the day you put the, you put the buy order and the sell order so the next is the clearing clearing i can say that we can define it as determining the obligation of all the parties that is the buyer has the obligation to pay the money and the seller has the obligation to surrender the shares so in clearing we determine the shares determine the obligation for the responsibility identifies seller owes and the amount of money that the buyer owes for every trade this happens on t plus 1 day so as i said invest as far as investor is concerned nothing much happens on t plus 1 but on the background this clearing happens on t plus 1 day and the third step is the settlement settlement is that uh, after determining the obligations in clearing stage we have to ensure that this shares are settled that the shares are moved from the seller's account to the buyer's account and the money is moved from the buyer to seller so this is done on t plus 2 day and if monday you do trade wednesday it will be done so be, next slide i will be explaining you regarding the settlement process initiated by nsc but before that i want you to have a brief idea on the entities involved in the settlement systems because in india we have a very decentralized system of settlement that is that there are a lot of intermediaries involved in the settlement procedure so these are the main intermediaries involved so i'll give you a brief description about each one and we will go directly into the settlement process so the first one is the depository depository uh, in india we have two depository there is the nsdl and cdsl so the function of them is that these two depositories hold your dmat account and clearing members also need to maintain a clearing pool account with them so they while traditionally shares are were held in a physical uh, certificate form but today it is mandatory to hold it in electronic or dematerial so these depositories are help in the transfer of shares and they hold the shares in dmat form and explaining about clearing corporation we already had a session by sir explaining about clearing corporation is a intermediary uh, in helping enhancing the 
enhancing the transfer of shares and the money between the buyer and the seller but it is one of the major participants because they function as the heart of this settlement process i would i would say the responsibility of clearing called national securities clearing corporation limited they, they have a very important function that is take charge in risk management as it is obligated for meeting all the settlement regardless of the member so if the member even if the member defaults it is the responsibility of the clearing corporation to ensure that the obligations are met we do have then clearing members or custodians uh, custodians usually function as clearing members as well so uh, regarding custodians we reuma in a session has already explained it very well so i'm not going in detail about them but i would say that in layman's language i can say that depositories enhance transfer whereas custodians store these shares and the last one is the clearing banks so uh, depositories and clearing uh, custodians take care of the stocks but we need funds as well so in india we, they, they have designated 13 banks as clearing banks and it is the responsibility of these clearing banks all of them uh, all of the uh, depository participants they should hold an account of the clearing bank and it is their responsibility that in case of payout the clearing members receive funds in the clearing account and in ca case of pay in they need to make funds available so the responsibility of clearing banks is nothing but to ensure that the funds are available on time coming into the settlement process of nse uh, this is the diagram i have shown you on the right side here this is the this is the diagram which is shown as well as there so this is say that nscl actually the clearing corporation of nse is nsccl so it functions as a as a um, link between all the other intermediaries all the other intermediaries like the exchange clearing bank custodians or depositories so let's see what happens in that process so first as far as a buy order and sell order is matched these details are exchanged the exchange that is in this case it is nsc they will transfer them to the clearing corporation and the clearing corporation informs the custodians or clearing members that the uh, trade details that they have and the clearing members affirm back that that the share that trade has happened and based on the affirmation the clearing corporations applies multilateral netting and determines the obligations so the next thing is that after they have affirmed that the the trade has happened they need to download the obligation download of obligation that is the determine determination of obligations of the buyer and the seller and the pay in advance of funds or securities so uh, even if you just not understand what the functions of each and i would say that just consider right side we have depositories just consider it as depositories as the stock bank I means stock bank but they enhance the transfer of shares and the stocks are held by custodians and the left side right side, right side you can see the clearing bank clearing bank you can see that it, it is a money bank so two aspects are involved stock money stocks are supported by the depositories and money is supported by the clearing bank so just imagine just assume it as in that way so uh, the instructions should be given to clearing banks to make funds available and the same instructions should be given to the depositories as well to ensure that the stocks are available on time and then the, the next thing ha which happens is the pay in of securities from the depositories that the nscl advises the clearing corporation advises the depository to debit the pool like a pool like they have a pool of accounts as i said debit pool of account of custodians and clearing members and credit its account the same way that the they have to also nscc also advises the clearing bank to debit the account of custodians in the in the i mean in the sense of the finance in sense of money they have to debit the account of custodians and clear, clearing members and credit its account the same thing happens for securities as well securities has to be transferred to the to the accounts of the buyer this funds has been has to be transferred that is the payout of funds has to be transferred to the clear accounts of the uh, seller so after that after settling all these account the investors get intimated through the depository participants depository participants are actually uh, we can, i cannot say that all brokers are depository participants but so uh, zeroda for example they have they they are, they are a depository participant depository participant is a, like an agent which functions as the agent of the depository to the investors that they do that is the depository participants helps in providing services of depositories to the investors so you can see that uh image once more just to have an idea on the settlement process of nsc that the 
NSE, NSECL, clearing bank, custodians or depositors involving all these intermediaries. And then coming to the a very important function played by the clearing houses, that is the risk management. There are a lot of risks involved in the clearing and settlement process. So basically there are three types of risk and the clearing houses play the very significant role in guaranteeing these risks. They take, they take care of these risks even if the individuals defaults in it. The first one is third party risk. As I said that India in India, we have a very decentralized form of clearing and settlement system. We have a lot of intermediaries like depositories, clearing banks, uh, custodians, clearing members, exchange. So there are chances of failure from any of these intermediate. So clearing house takes a responsibility. Even if any of these intermediary defaults or anything, they take the responsibility of fulfilling the, the obligation. That is called third party risk. Next is the operational risk. Operational risk is that we, is from studying this much, so you might have understood that there are a lot of procedures or uh, technical aspects involved in the all aspects of involved in the uh, clearing corporation. So even if there is a delay happened in due to the, this technical process, that risk will also be guaranteed by the clearing houses. The, the last one is counterparty risk. Counterparty risk is the best example which I can give you is that what happened in short selling that if you sell the shares and you buy but if you do it in a very liquid shares you will not you will not be in a posi position to meet the obligation. So this is what happens on counterparty risk even if the individual participants that is the buyer or seller even if any one of them fails to meet his obligation that obligation will also be met by the clearing houses. So it is a very significant role played by the clearing houses so just uh, summarizing it i can say that there are three in risk involved third party risk operational risk and counterparty risk now coming into a very important segment of this that is the margin trading uh, sir i think he has trading while explaining about clearing corporations so, trading comes into play you do not so you just pay an, a part of it that is called a margin in the stock market margin trading refers to a process where by, by individual investors can afford to. so happen at only in one session that is it should happen between the time gap of 9 30 to 330 that this is what happens in intraday trading and short selling as well you can do short selling in as far as equity is concerned you can do short selling only in equity in only on intraday trades so once uh, you open an account you are required to pay an initial margin which is a certain percentage of the total traded value that when you account when you open a dmat account with a broker he will ask you to pay an initial margin say we can say that it is like a collateral security based on collateral security we will be asked you will be asked a predetermined percentage of the trade you will be asked to pay that is called initial margin and before you start trading you need to remember that the steps first is that the session you should maintain the minimum margin and even though the share prices are volatile but you should be in a position to minim maintain the minimum margin i can explain this is what explain is the minimum margin through the session and because on a very volatile day, the stock price can fall more than one had anticipated. But I can explain it with an example. For example, if Tata Steel stock prices are uh, quartered at 400 rupees and it falls by 4.25 percentage, assuming that the initial margin is 8 percentage and the maintenance margin is 4 percentage. So you just uh, 4 percent of the total value of the shares respectively. Then you trade off. Uh, 8 percentage minus 4.25 it comes 3.75 percentage but as i said we should always maintain a ma margin of 4 percentage so he has to add up an amount equivalent to 0 0.25 percentage to ensure that the maintain he maintain a margin of 4 percentage so this is what maintenance margin is up to and in this case you will have to either give more money to the broker to maintain the margin or trade will get squared off automatically by the broker and secondly, if you need to square off your position at the end of your trading year, you have either you if you have bought the shares, you have to sell them. That is the you have to meet the obligation. If you have that is the what have as I said, I already said that intraday trading, you can only do short selling. And if you have bought the shares, you have to sell them. And if you have sold the shares, you have to buy them. This is called short selling. 
and thirdly if you are not able to meet the obligation that you have to convert it into a delivery order after a trade so that the a commission and all it will be very based on the broker you have selected in which you have to keep the cash ready to buy that is that margin in margin trading you will be only buying with a portion but if you are converting into delivery then you have to pay, pay the full amount i can show i will show you practically how it is done and if if even if one of these shares is must the broker will automatically square off the position in the market i will show that for example let's go to the trading terminal and i'll show you that if you put a buy order for reliance say so you can see over here this margin required or you can say required see uh, i have selected intraday that is intraday trading and even though the price comes around 2115.35 but the margin required for this particular share as of now this keeps on varying there is actually a broker has their own formula to calculate it it keeps on varying you just need 338.46 for intraday trades to buy uh, buy it intra buy the reliance shares so it is a kind of speculation and you get only the profit you do not get the shares you can settle it in cash you go you call it as cash settlement and you get the profit and uh, to sum up i would say that it just i will just read out the key takeaways we have uh, what we have told today is that the day the day you make the transaction is called the trade day represented as trade day and the broker is required to issue a contract not by the end of the trade day and even if you make put the buy order and the sell order or t day the shares will be only reflected on your dmat account by the end of t plus 2 and um, as far as equity i repeat as far as equity is concerned or settlement happens in india happen on two plus uh, t plus two for derivatives and all it is different i will explain in the next class probably and when you sell the shares the shares are blocked immediately and the sale proceeds credited again to t plus two day so yeah that comes to the end of it so if you have any questions or anything you can ask me so Next, uh, okay. So, yes, if sir. you have questions, uh, please ask. Uh, the topic was very important uh, for the examination point of view. Uh, you know, it's trading and settlement, and it's uh, the content. Uh, content delivered are very important to for the uh, to be part of the stock market investment, and uh, for will be beneficial for the. Uh, if a person interested for investment they, these things are very important uh, to be understand uh, uh, by the person who wanted to trade in the stock market so anybody have questions please uh, ask so trading and settlement and uh, the days of uh, settlement t plus 1 t plus 2 etc uh, have explained here and uh, 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 i have a question uh, snehit so uh, what will be the uh, uh, transaction charges of uh, what about the transaction charges of depository so cds and NS, nsdl uh, for this case snehit am i audible yes sir i have seen the just charge is because in contract not mentioned these are the charges charged 